For the past year, it feels like we've been in the golden age of gaming. From Baldur's Gate 3, Power World, Helldivers 2, and with so many great games to play, there's never been a better time to buy a PC to enjoy all these awesome titles at their maximum graphic fidelity. Introducing Starforge. Fellas, we have been partnering with Starforge for over a year now, and they have been incredible at every level. The experienced builders over at Starforge meticulously craft every gaming PC by hand right in Austin, Texas. They also offer PCs for every budget, with financing options as well as a two-year parts and labor warranty. And the best thing is they ship incredibly fast. Well, as I have dealt with PC companies in the past where after buying the PC, it would literally take three to six months before it even got shipped. Talk about a buzzkill. Starforce though, we got ours in less than a week. Everyone was coming by the stream while we were playing Dragon's Dogma 2 asking how in the world we were getting the frame counts that we were getting. Now I try to say it was a skill issue, but let's be real. It's because Starforce PC has the power to carry even in games that aren't exactly optimize. If you're looking to elevate your gaming experience, down below we'll have a link to Starforge's website. You can pick up your perfect PC today. And again, huge thanks to Starforge for being a partner on this channel. Why I'm broke so I can't buy skins and skip stuff like the rest? Why? Dude, that's what not that's that's not what any of that's about. It's just how I spend my time. I like to invest in things that give me a level playing field and um Granted, this game doesn't have like major competitive in-game PVE. That's not what this game is meant to be. Good game mentality, people don't want to earn shit. Well, look, guys, I mean, look, man, I, I have to agree. Me and Amber, I, I would just rather this. I'm completely fine with skins. I'm even completely fine with these things, these um premium packages. But I think whenever it's items, you know, when it's energy activators, which to me is like, this is a very much, this again, I, I equate this to like an Ascendant Alloy or Ascendant Shards in Destiny. That's like exotic in-game, like super, super in-game materials. And it should never be for sale. I just think that these items should never be for sale. If you want to have all the skins in the world, dude, go, for, go nuts, go crazy. You want to look like a damn maid, a panda bear. You want to buy ultimates in their packages. You want to have XP boosters. I'm not a fan of that either, but it is what it is. I just, where I draw the line is items like these. I draw the line there. Because to me, those, those are true in-game materials. That should be something you only grind for. And they make a huge difference in the lethality of your descendant. It, just because they're available doesn't mean you have to buy them. They are obtainable with time. Right. And at any point in the future, if this game actually does want to incorporate raids and have true in-game in their PvE, something very few games have been able to pull off. I will ask the question before ever competing in such a race. I would say, hey, can you buy energy activators? Can you buy the crystallizations? Because if you can buy in-game materials, and that tells me right off the bat that we are not on a level playing field. There's already so much that already says, hey, we're not on a level playing field. But this screams it. This screams it from the mountaintops. Unlimited skins, premium skins, even the unlimited descendants, I'm not a big fan of, but whatever, whatever. I just, in-game material like that, which makes such a big difference for your weapons and your descendant, you know. But less than 1% of the players would ever buy that. If there was like a raid race in this game, so in Destiny, we have raid races. About twice a year, we have a new raid come out. One of the raids is normally like a refurbished raid from Destiny, one. But the annual expansion always brings a big raid. The big raid is a moment there for all the veteran players to compete against each other. And it's a lot of fun. Even if you don't succeed and even beat the raid, it's just, just a lot of fun. But if Saul Greppo's team had the ability to purchase in-game materials that gave them a huge advantage over us, even if they, even, of course, they've won multiple times in the past, but when they win, when they, if they win, I would immediately assume that it was because of the advantage they purchased with real money that gave them that benefit. So that's also why we like contest mode. So contest mode that, you know, it makes everything a lot harder, but it also puts the level cap at at a certain level, which means even if you had, if you play 24 hours a day, every single day, it doesn't matter. You just have to make it the 1965 in this case, is the most recent rate. It, what it means guys, is like, it's like hitting, it's like, it's like going and playing sports, dude. You know what I mean? And there's a reason why people get tested or an MMA and shit, shit like that, you know? Uh, do you want to fight the juice head? Probably not. I'm being told though, that there is a limit to how many of these you can buy. I just don't know how long that limit lasts. I don't, I don't know. I'm being told that you can only buy two of these. It does not say anywhere on here there's a limit. So I don't know. But are we having fun though? I like the game. I'm not saying I don't like the game. I'm just saying like, I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna take it that seriously is all I'm saying guys. The mega dungeon and stuff like that. I'm probably not gonna go in there with the intention of, hey, 
let me let me be let me be day one ready or some shit. Not whenever you have monetization like this, it exists. It kind of it just erodes the competition. And I know a lot of you probably, you know, maybe you don't give a shit about that. But um, I enjoy that kind of stuff. Guys, I'm adding this note at the end of the video because we had a lot of people while we were talking about this saying you could only buy two energy accelerators and two crystallizations and that was it. Fellas, I can confirm. No, you can continually keep buying these over and over. At least from my research and also from me testing it out, it seems like the game is literally saying, hey, you want to buy the most coveted in-game materials that's utilized to increase the module capacity of your descendants and your weapons, upping its lethality substantially you can get these materials right here right now for straight up money and i got so many comments when talking about this things like cross why do you care what people spend money on listen fellas i get it somewhere along the way you guys became okay with a system like this maybe it was warframe maybe it was another game i don't know but for me personally i'm not a big fan of it who's to say that nexon here doesn't have similar in-game content to say something like destiny where we have a raid race i mean they have mega dungeons coming out in december which looks really cool the the problem is, whoever wins that, I'm going to be questioning how much money they spent. How much of that was influenced by them swiping the credit card? And listen, it's not me attacking anyone for how they spend their money. Dude, spend how you want. But in order for someone like me to actually take any type of in-game seriously, in something like First Descendant, the playing field is going to have to be level. And I know I made the association to these in-game materials, to Ascendant Alloys and Ascendant Shards, but it's actually worse than that. Yes, Ascendant Alloy allows you to get enhanced perks on a weapon. Ascendant Shards allows you to fully upgrade an exotic. But we're talking small stat bumps that in the overall scheme of things, you could still work around. These materials, they raise the capacity of your descendants to therefore hold stronger mods, fully upgradable mods. Crystallizations also allows you to slot those mods at a lower cost. Granted, it does require you to have max out proficiency. And I'm not saying you don't have to do things on the gaming side to take advantage of these materials. I'm just saying that in in general, in my opinion, in-game materials like this, which makes such a substantial difference on your descendant and weapons efficacy, should never be sold. Look, I'm down with the bunny outfits. You want to look like a panda? Look like a panda. But when we start talking XP boosters that you can outright buy, boosters to increase, Kuiper shard drops, gold, and now outright in-game materials, that right there is when this becomes a deal breaker for me, guys. Call me old school, but whether it was MRPGs or even games that I play today, I pay my fee every year and I jump in the game and outside of drip the only difference between my character and the next guy's character is based on however much we both committed to the grind and I don't know if you know it or not the first descendant is all about the grind are there going to be free players that can earn everything start to finish yeah and I applaud those guys truly there's also going to be wells that are going to buy everything in this store my question to you is if a raid was to drop right now in the first descendant if they had a pinnacle in-game activity present today who would be at a greater advantage the free-to-play player or the guy who just dropped 200 bucks on these in-game materials that's it that's all i'm gonna say guys fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right